Our subject is making a fresh start. It's a beautiful lesson. Making a fresh start. Um, Leviticus 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to ask Mother McClendon if she would read that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, 25 8. Now, this is unbeknownst to me, so hang in here with me, okay? <laughs> okay. And this is the word of the Lord. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of the atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall show the, and ye shall hallow the fifteenth year uh, proclamation, proclaiming liberty throughout all the lands unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possessions, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that this year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, rather reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you, Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year be five. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee, and by thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and show himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again, and one of his brethren may be redeemed, and may redeem him. For unto him the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. In our lesson today, it's talking about making a fresh start. In Israel, they had what they call seven years of plenty, seven years of, then they would take seven years of to store up, then they have slaves, and they were to release the land at certain times so that the land would not be used and they would let it lie dormant so that the land would replenish itself. And the year of Jubilee was that year when they would release the slaves and they wouldn't do any work. They would, they would, they would release people from payments that were owed to them. It was just like a, a I don't know what you call it, a freedom. It was freedom from debt. It was freedom from everything. And it was considered the year of Jubilee, which was the 50th year. It talks about uh, the brother that, that dwelled in you, that waxed him poor, to be sold unto thee. Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondman. Release him. And then it talked about hired servants. And then it talked about the children. Then it talked about... Uh, uh, the families and, and the grapes and you know they were they were people that worked on the land and they had they gleaned in the field they had corn uh, uh, they had vineyards and different things so they were trying to set forth a standard or a custom that God had already set forth in a law that you would not hold people to certain things for a number of years. Uh, 
this was quite different from their surrounding people because the surrounding people didn't have this type of mercy. But God wanted to show mercy to those that were uh, in the household of Israel, or Israel, the Israelites. Uh, in introduction, I'm going to read that for How does a nation keep its economy operating both efficiently and fairly? This question does not have an easy answer. And the more complex the economy, the harder it is to achieve. Modern industrial nations all have had to wrestle with this question. One of the greatest challenges came in the Great Depression of the 1930s. Economic activity had come to a halt. Since then, nations have tried to develop ways to keep such a ca catastrophe from reoccurring. Old Testament Israel, unlike most modern society, had a simple agriculture, pastoral, and commercial economy. But even such as a simple economy could suffer from inefficiency and unfairness. God therefore included Israel's law, certain mechanism to give a series of fresh start to individuals. Listen, come in, stop playing with that door. Uh, families and the nation. Come on in and close the door behind you. All right. So we see the year of Jubilee was when God was trying to release some things so that people could have a fresh start. Slaves that were, like I said, uh, there were cert certain things that went along with uh, going to uh, what we would call going along with the laws. The chapter from which this lesson is taken is devoted to the outworking of the Sabbath principle in the life of the nation of Israel, just as the Israelites were to observe this weekly Sabbath every seven days, so they were to set aside Sabbath years. And we talk about Sabbath years, that's every seventh year. And every 50th year, following every seventh Sabbath of years, were the year of Jubilee. So we see that Jubilee just simply means that God was giving everybody a chance to start over. You can pass out the books, uh, Deaconess, if, if you have them. For those that have books, we, I don't know if Brother Theodore left his book. But, uh, I, no, I think it's his fault. He, he took the heavy on that one. Uh, so, we're talking about, we're on page uh, 34 in the books. The term Jubilee comes from the Hebrew word for the blowing of the ram's horn, which signaled the beginning of this year. Though there is a difference of opinion about whether Jubilee was simply the Sabbath of the 49th year or the extra Sabbath year after the 49th, and use 50th implies an extra year. Thus, Israel would observe two Sabbath years in a row. The ram's horn trumpet would sound on the 10th of the seventh month, which was the Day of Atonement. The trumpet call, begun at the sanctuary, was taken up and repeated throughout the whole land. This instrument was one used for all important occasions. It announced the Lord's descent to Mount Sinai. Everybody, y'all come up. Y'all too far back. Y'all too far back. Y'all got to be part of the Sunday school. Come on up. Y'all sitting back like y'all visitors. And no brother Philip should have been right up here. Yeah, there you go. Now you feel like you're part of something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, let, let the center folks get in at the back. Um, so we're talking about Jubilee. And now we're talking about its benefits. Israel was to consecrate the 50 year to proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. 
liberty or release was the general principle that characterized the transaction in the year of Jubilee. Indeed, Ezekiel 46, 17, it is called the year of liberty. The details of how this liberty uh, was to be uh, affected are expanded in the verse that follow our text. But even here, some details are given. Ye shall return every man unto his possession. Babe, your, your book is up here. Unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Possession refers to the land based on the truth that the land belonged to the Lord and that families held it as only as tenants and it was not to change hands permanently. Land that had been sold was to be restored with, without cost and the original family in, uh, to the original family in the year of Jubilee. Now you know this is amazing for God to have set up such a principle that even if you sold land to someone else or if you sold land to your neighbor or you sold land to your brother or you sold land, it was to be returned back to its original owner because they said that the land don't belong to you, it belongs to the Lord. Amen. It belongs to the Lord. And so, what God was simply trying to get, I think, in my, in my little puny little thought, He was trying to get people not to be so self-centered on their possessions. He was trying to get people not to be so, 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 uh, how should I say, wrapped up and tied up in how they should be or how things that they're doing should be about. They should be caring about one another. And so you see that there were Sabbaths and then there were years of Sabbath and then the 49th or the next year was to be the year when everything was to be returned, possessions and everything. Back to, back to its original owner. And so, if we had that today, Lord have mercy. <laughs> think about that. Just stop and think about if we had this type of system today, man, 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 that'd be a lot of stuff returning, wouldn't it? I don't know how we... <laughs> Woo. Anybody got any questions? During that year, farmers were relieved of labor, of sowing, and harvesting. So you, they, didn't do no, they didn't do no harvesting during that year. They didn't do no sowing during that year. Matter of fact, they were forbidden even to make a harvest of what they grew by, by itself. The fields, the vineyards were to be left unworked. And on any Sabbath day, for the whole year was considered holy. Yes. So all this on the 50th year. All of this was during the 50th year. Even the return back of, um, of um, property mm -hmm. to its original owner? Yes. All of that was done during the year of Jubilee. They call it the year of Jubilee. You would return properties. If you if, if, if there were slaves, they were to be free. If, you, if anybody owed you any money, you were to release them from debt. Means that you owe me nothing. So if you can live long enough to the 50th year, you could, you know, be released of everything that, it was just, that's why the lesson is called making a fresh start. Mm -hmm. And I think what God was simply saying, he, he wanted to relieve the oppression and burden of what people had been bogged down with. So that people were not held for a lifetime in debt. People were not held for a lifetime in, in slavehood. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there was a year of Jubilee where everything and even the land was left alone. So I, I don't know, they do some of that in the South. Now in the South, they, they uh, I know where I was in the Delta, they grew cotton for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden they stopped growing cotton because I guess the land had gotten worn out from that same usage. And then they started growing like alfalfa or something like that. Something that would not make the land happy, you know. So I guess they're trying to follow the same principle of the year of Jubilee. But this said no sowing, no harvesting whatsoever. 